back with the school museum. Um, I believe it's at the beginning of day two, and oh, yeah, we just in our bottles and got like a dollar of. Welcome to Fritz. Feel free to look around or something. Everything is out on the shelves. What special matters you to you? Um, okay. I'm not really supposed to be chatting to anyone, but... Does Frit have a warehouse in the back of the Whirling and Rags? A warehouse? I don't know. Maybe. I don't really care what Frit does. Come on. Give me something to work with here. She looks up from under her brow. Fine. Frit doesn't have a warehouse. Just a little back room here. Okay. Um, is this about the questions again? Because I don't really know anything. Can you tell me anything about the dead body? Um, I don't really know anything. I mean, I know it's there, but I haven't seen it, so... How long has it been there? I don't know. Really long. Did you know the man who died? Not really. Not really? Does that mean you knew him a little? Um, no. I didn't know him at all. What do you think happened? Um, I don't know. No need to worry. It's just standard procedure for us to ask around. If you hear anything, let us know, okay? Okay. Thanks for your help. Uh-huh. Okay, that didn't really bring it, get us anything. But then, I didn't really expect it to. Okay. Dogs range coat. Bottles. Okay, so I just interviewed the Union, um, Hardy Boys. Holding tab to see what lights up that you can interact with, which I don't think very much. A lorry stuck in the traffic jam. This big, heavy grub. The windows are cl fumes of heavy fuel oil waft over you, making your I eyes think. sting. this mug in the trash show it to the man yours <laughs> oh man oh man that's great look at that guy go i haven't seen anything that funny in a while doesn't sound like it's his god damn <laughs> thanks for that but no it's not mine he doesn't live in martinez You're a lorry man, right? What's your stance on drugs? Drugs? They are shit, man. I don't let anything pollute my body. Takes a long drag on his cigarette. Smell of booze and cigarettes. What's different about narcotics? You know where that shit comes from? Sarah Miridza. Safre. Il Mara. They take the money from our local junkies here and then use it to outcompete us in the manufacturing sector. 
They know they can't beat us in a fair fight, so they have to get us to weaken ourselves somehow. It's racial sabotage, racial economic sabotage. So I take it you're not smuggling drugs out of Martinez? Not in, not out. I'll never betray the purity of my tribe. So you're telling us that you don't know anything about drug smuggling through Terminal B? I don't know shit. And if I did, I wouldn't tell you. He pops on a cigarette. And what are you still hanging around here for? Most of the other Kaminoers have left. What do you think? I can't leave the Lorient unguarded. Stuff's been getting looted lately. It's those little kids sneaking around at night. If they touch my stuff, the bosses will be on my ass like ass cancer. There was a bunch of spilled boxes in the back of a big lorry nearby. I did see one lorry with the trailer doors open on my way here. Do you know what happened? Yeah, I knew that guy. He was an honest driver who loved this country. We were having a good debate about genetics at the Wheeling in Rags when some kid boys smashed his lock and took damn near everything. Lost his fucking job over it. Since he left, I haven't had anyone to talk to. I wonder why nobody wants to talk to you. If they were getting drunk inside the whirling in rags, how could they know who broke into the lorry? If you were all at the whirling, how do you know who it was that broke into the lorry? What? Aren't we allowed to say that he's a kid to do all this sitting around here? That's not rota science, man. <laughs> If it's not you, then who's running drugs out of Terminal B? Isn't it obvious? Fucking Sealang. That beady eyed South Samaran. <laughs> His little side business is a scam. I wouldn't be surprised if he was peddling drugs as well. Who's that? He's a Samaran guy who likes to pretend he's some kind of businessman. Oh, really? He's just selling his employer stuff. Stuff he stole after he broke the seals on his Humanox lorry. Where do I find him? Just follow the smell. It smells like uh, apricot and oil when you're nearby. <laughs> the lorry man lets out a raspy croak at his own sense of humor. Yes, yes. Where is he? Looks like uh, I offended your partner there. Too bad. Sea Lang's usually a little bit south of here, near the canal. You can't miss him. Just watch yourselves. His tribe are natural liars. It's in their blood. He's your man, all right. One hundred percent. He nods in a sagely manner, then another t puff of that cigarette. I wouldn't be so sure about it. Not until we've heard what Sea Lang himself has to say. Guess we need to pay Sea Lang a visit, then. Guess so. He grins, contented with himself. I do not like him. But then, I don't think you're supposed to. Oh, is it the guy that we liked earlier? Now it's turning into a kind of a snow limbo, man. What's on your mind? You seem like a man who knows about drugs. Ah, man. Me and narcotics go way back. Had some good times surfing the psychic waves of my own consciousness, you know? Holds his hands behind his head and leans back. But those days are behind me. There are other addictions in my life now. Why the inquiry, my man? Pause is letting the memory dissipate. You finance those other addictions with drug trafficking? Need to get high and I'm looking for a dealer. Let me be straight with you. I'm trying to figure out who's smuggling drugs out of Terminal B. We have a credible lead, sir. Someone on this roundabout is waiting for a bell shipment from the harbor to load it on their lorry and drive it to Jamrock. Not me, ma'am. No way. I don't need any trouble. Shit's bad enough anyway. This jam's got folks up in arms, and I'm afraid it's headed toward a conflagration. Wait, then why are you still hanging around? 
Who do you think could be conducting the drug trade now? Then? Gotta guard the stuff. Bosses don't look kindly on missing cargo. And it gives me time to work on my rhymes. A rhyme smith? This is quite credible. It goes with its cadence and way of speaking. Who do you think could be conducting the drug trade then? Look, man, I try to stay away from the criminal underbelly of Revachol. I'm a guest here. You really need to find another man to probe with those questions. We wouldn't say he's lying, sire. Oh, no. He's a poet. Hit him with your best verse. Your best verse? You don't even have a bad verse in here. Just tumbleweed and liquor stains. Wait, no. What are you doing? <laughs> she broke me. She effing broke me. That's brutal, man. But you know, time will... No, stop. He's already mortified. No, Tommy, these are my rhymes. Listen, she effed me till I bled. That's, um... In the name of God, what are you doing? It's not real, guys. It's not my actual thoughts. It's a poem. Yeah, yeah, I get that, and it's cool, but... I'll never be the same again. She's always there. F the case. F everything. Total doom. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I get it. These are your rhymes. They're from your life. Doesn't matter if they're robust, they're honest. So... Thanks, man. He doesn't know what to say, so he just repeats. He's not lying. He liked the end. Yes. And I also thank you for stopping. <laughs> we have a drug investigation to return to. How about we do that? He's not... Samaran street vendor surrounded by a motley assemblage of goods. When he realizes you're looking at him, his face breaks into a wide, welcoming grin. No, oh, I don't think I saw this guy the other day. The name Sileng is embroidered over his breast pocket. Happy shopping, officer! Everything's cool here! He gives you a thumbs up. What's so cool? Everything's cool. The goods are cool. The customers are cool. The place is cool. And one more thing, officer. You're very cool. Bang, 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 bang. He makes both hands into finger, finger pistols and fires a few finger bullets into the air. Really? You think I'm cool? Oh, yes. You got style. You got personal style! You know what you like. He surveys his consumerist kingdom with an air of satisfaction. You like premium menswear. Look around and browse. Everything looks cool on a guy like you. Take your time. He settles back into the pile of boxes he's sitting on. Where are you from, sailing? Me? It's a boring story, officer. Who cares about the past? I'm all business now. All Revachol. This man probably comes from Seagai, sometimes known as the Apricot Suzerainty, an archipelago in the Samara Isola. You're from the Apricot Suzerainty, right? Apricot Suzerainty calls to mind an era when the Seagai archipelago was colonized by Revachol. It's a bit of a slur, in other words. Sorry, I didn't mean to say that. I meant to say that you're from, pronounce a very painstakingly, sea guy. Very cool. I admire your awareness of our intertwined histories. It's super nice of you to apologize for colonialism, but the apricot suzerainty is a shithole. That's why I left. Right, but isn't only that bad because of Rivershaw? If 
If you say so, officer. I don't worry too much about politics. I'm an entrepreneur, you know. Whatever is good for business is good for me. Persuade him to give you some money. Try it. Start with a little compliment, then work your way up from there. This is about business, remember. Hey, you seem like a really successful entrepreneur. Would you like to support a member of the local police force? Oh, okay. But why, officer? This, the man stops, his face suddenly serious. Think of it as an investment. An investment? What kind of investment? He raises his brow, intrigued. An investment in me, a highly experimental human being. My risk-reward ratio is insane. I'm a policeman. It's an investment in a good relationship with the RBM. I told me I need enough money to live, otherwise it's game over and I don't want to die. Investment in me. I guess it can't be any riskier than speculating in exotic derivatives. How much are we talking about here? Ten real. Ten real is a bargain for that kind of investment. You got it, my man. He takes a ten note from a leather pouch. Cool, I have enough money to be able to sleep somewhere tonight. I'm excited about not, like, freezing to death out in the streets again. Yay. So, Seeling, what's your stance on drugs? Drugs? I don't go in for that, officer. Drugs ruin lives. For a moment, he's unsure how to respond. Unless you're into drugs, of course. In which case, drugs are excellent. Mwah! Tasty, tasty drugs. Instead of burned drugs, I actually don't like drugs. We're looking for a lorry driver who's transporting drugs out of the harbor. He, is a, he or she is in this traffic jam. I actually don't like drugs. That's very cool. I don't like drugs either. I only said I do because I didn't want to sound lame. Peer pressure. Sir, it appears to be true. No drugs in sight. Not in the box of sunglasses or under the speakers. I'm super into drugs. That's cool. Especially after you <laughs> said you don't like them. All the cool detectives do drugs without liking them. Sadly, I don't have any drugs on sale here. He smiles. I like how you can just say both options and he calls you out on it, but you know. Looking for a lorry driver who's transporting drugs out of the harbor. He or she is in this traffic jam. That's even cooler. You investigating that and all. But uh, I am not a lorry driver. I'm just a street vendor. I don't know anything about that. A blatant lie, sire. Yet he tells it with such conviction. We'd believe him if we didn't know better. But you are a lorry man. Another driver has identified you and your lorry. Who said that? It's the fat racist, right? <laughs> I bet it's him. He has an agenda against me because I'm an immigrant who works harder than he does. He's a hater. So you admit you're a lorry driver? No, I just said I work harder and he's an asshole. I'm... He stops to think. Realizing he can't get out of it. Smart man. Okay, maybe I'm a lorry driver too. A little. But that's not the most important thing about me. That's my day job. This is my dream. He spreads his arms. Stop squirming. What do you know about the drug operation at the harbor? Nothing. I told you. I'm not a dumb guy. I don't get involved with that crowd. And what crowd is that? Crowd, you know, the drug crowd. No, he wasn't talking about an abstract crowd. It was that crowd. It wasn't some drug crowd. You know who they are. Tell me now. Shush, please. There's bad people doing bad things here. That's all I know. Please, don't get me into this mess. I spent 15 years working my way up. Looks around, then lowers his voice. Here we go. There's a tiny bit of truth on the table. Zoom in on it. If you don't want to get into this mess, you have to give us a reason to move on. It's a she, okay? The other drivers call her the lady driver. You're better off staying away from her. The way they talk about her, she's no lady. 
I think we talked about the odds, so um, a reason her those one soul could be worn down on her shoes was that she was a lorry driver. Was a, like she was a driver that's been a lot of time driving. So like maybe the odd soul that's the eighth member of the Hardys is a lorry driver. Interesting. Could this driver be connected to the Hardy Boys? Could she be associated with the Hardy Boys? I don't know. I'm not local. I don't know anything about that. Who are these other drivers who talk? All of them. I don't know. I told you all I know. Are we cool now? I really want us to be cool now. Who exactly is talking about this lady driver of yours? The racist or the other one with the tattoos? He points north. All of them. Even the ones who've left. I don't hang out with them. I don't remember who has tattoos. Is the lady driver the old woman back there? Point to the pale driver, dazed out strange. I don't know. Maybe. If she is, I haven't gone near her. I don't get involved. I told you. He's not ruling her out. Okay, we're cool now. All right. I scored. Let's cap this off with a purchase. You can walk away from here with funky sunglasses, detective. Both of you. You deserve it. I look around, thanks. There are clothes inside. Cheap second-hand clothes, smelling of strangers' body odors. Don't be shy. These are premium class clothes. Good quality fabrics, best retro design. Save the economy with your style, officer. I can need more money. If, like, if any of my things cost more than $2, then I need more money in order to spend the night. Save the economy? That sounds off. Save the economy? What are you talking about? Haven't you heard, officer? We've got to be economically conscious. Recycle your cash, keep it in circulation. Don't buy new things. Buy eco. This doesn't make any sense. Why exactly does the economy need saving? Look around, officer. You see all these premium goods just sitting there, not getting bought? We've got to keep the flow of goods moving. Is this really the economy we want to leave to our children? You're right, we've got to save mother economy. But I don't have children, I think. It's just nature. Powerful economies expand, weak economies go extinct. This economy is really just a distraction from the cultural issue. You know, immigrants and... Look, man, I want to buy some clothes. I don't have children, I think. Too bad, officer. Kids make it all worthwhile. Without kids, who's going to be around to enjoy the economy? <laughs> Don't let me stop you. Open the box and browse a little. Browse through the box. You find your hands deep in tattered and faded garments made from weird polyester blends that make your body itch and sweat in all the wrong places. The box smells like cat piss or like an old person with no money. Economical, but also trendy. Look first hand, buy second hand. Keep the economy moving. Find something worth salvaging from that pile of rags. Something cold grazes your hand. Synthetic and sleek. A windbreaker. Surf, it says, but also wind. Summer. 100% waterproof. And sport. All in different typefaces. Good choice, officer. Mega sporty. And it's only 450 for you, sir. Plus one composure, minus one shivers. Okay. That's an option. Need more money first. You see two lowly, defeated speakers. Thralls. Slaves, basically. Perched atop them like conquerors surveying the land. A pair of found, durable wear sneakers. Ultra serious. I can see you have a taste for luxury, officer. Can't keep your eyes off those sneakers? A pair of found ultras. The design is impossibly sleek and simple. A futuristic silhouette with a sleek monochrome colorway, a jet black upper, and a silver lined midsole. Those sneakers, mister. Those sneakers are the latest found sneakers. Super air, 
सुपर फाइन सुपर कूल ओनली फिफ्टी रियाल Only that's madness. Fun ultra, we're the future. You remember the slogan from some magazine? Hmm, actually, pretty good. Plus one reaction, plus one hand-eye coordination. Check the speakers. These once respectable speakers have been conquered, reduced to a mere prop by the indomitable Fun Ultras atop them. A small heat emboss on the veneer reads, "Solidarity aid from the People's Republic of Samara." The speakers themselves don't seem to display any magical qualities. No, no, don't look at the speakers, officer. Look at the sneakers. The sneakers are the stars here. What about the speakers, though? Doesn't anyone want those speakers? These, officer? These speakers are Samaran garbage. I'm ashamed to even use them for props. <laughs> Don't waste your time on them. Samaran trash. That sounds like they're from the Samaran People's Republic, produced under the dictatorship of the proletariat. No way, officer. These aren't for sale. They're bad speakers. Low-fi socialist junk. Okay, I just buy this ad. Conquered Samarian speakers. I need some speakers. That's why I want them. I think I might be low. I social chunk of myself. You're right. I don't have time for chunk. I lead a luxury life. That's why I want them. No, officer. You're a high class policeman who accepts nothing less than the best. Lucky for you, I've got the best on sale. You don't know who I am. I don't even know it myself. Pause. I want the speakers. Well, if you want them, he pauses for a moment, calculating. But see. They are the pedestal for my sneakers. If I let go of the speakers, where will the sneakers go? I can't leave premium lifestyle sneakers on the ground. If, on the other hand, you wanted to buy the sneakers too, I could maybe throw in the speakers for little extra. Fifty cents. Damn. So you have to buy the sneakers first. Well, I'm like probably never gonna have enough money for that. So okay. There's a pile of cheap sunglasses in a small box, a variety of shapes and colors. You like sunglasses, officer? I've got the latest styles right here. The vendor takes a pair of sunglasses and sticks them under your nose. Try those shades on. Abort. These are hideous. What's more, they don't even fit your face. You can feel them pinching your nose and chafing against your brow. Damn, officer! You look like a mega secret spy. Very secret. They're practically made for you. I'll let you have them for two real and fifty cents. No, you are definitely not buying those. The lieutenant gently removes the glasses from your face, setting your you free again. Don't tell me what to do, Kim. I like these those sunglasses. No, I can't. We can't walk around with you looking like this. Okay, fine. Go ahead. If you want to look like a walking midlife crisis, then who am I to interfere? <laughs> Shades of self-destruction. Rummage through the box. These are all boring. Boring third-rate ho-hum sunglasses made of cheap Sirai's plastic, the kind of plastic that melts in the sun. Those UV stickers are almost certainly just there for the show. If anything, these lenses probably direct more UV light. Into your pupils, a UV magnifier. These are all first-rate sunglasses. Premium design, superb material, very cool, UV resistant. These will definitely keep your eyes safe and cool while doing your dangerous police work. Try again. Maybe you can find some interesting sunglasses in the box. Uh, I see a pair of water blue shades. The writing on the left temple says "Sub Icelandic Rijabu." The frame appears to be hand carved out of bone. Oh, very interesting choice, officer. Very high culture. For the first time, the street vendor's voice trails off as he watches you inspect the glasses. Try them on. This is how a sea monster sees the world. You've become a sea monster. Giant, hidden, and strangely tender at heart. All is blue. All right, but these actually make your vision worse. 
It's like literally being underwater. Wow, officer. You look so cool. Street vendor has picked up his pace again as you observe the world through deep, tinted lenses. And they can be yours for a mere three real. My regular customers have passed them all up because they've got no taste. But you found them. Kim, what about these? The lieutenant tilts his head and steps back, eyes narrowed in a thorough examination. It's a case to him. You look like a musician, like a blind musician, but you could do worse. Take them if you want. Okay, minus one perception, but plus one in plant diameter. Okay, don't really have the money to save at this moment, but to spare at this moment, but you know. Four points, so I should probably be spending them. The murder weapon, death spell, oh, yeah. The authority, the moral, and mystery. Okay. Which led the ledger? I don't know, Joyce. Snow covers the white on blue police livery of the motor carriage. The white colors nearly meld together. Wait, why am I even thinking about this? Wasn't I supposed to? Do something important? Something murder related? There's always something important. Doesn't mean you can't take a moment to admire this piece of machinery. This is a Caprice Kanema. The Caprice Motor Corps follow up to their highly successful workhorse, Caprice 40, and the answer to the Lums racing breed, Ferv series. With its air cooled, rear mounted 12 cylinder compression ignition engine driving the rear wheels through a four speed manual gearbox, the Kanema is able to reach 100 kilometers per hour in 13.5 seconds and go on to a top speed of 180 kilometers an hour. Want it roll over in the first sharp corner? The high center of balance is offset by a large battery bank mounted at the bottom of the cabin, feeding all the auxiliary systems and making the Kanema effectively a mobile power plant. This tech talk is really rubbing me the right way here. Due to a quite steep price tag, it is very unusual to see one in police livery. That machine really puts the loco back in locomotion point to the vehicle. Very cool. Mm -hmm. You want to take a closer look? What's it packing here? Point to the engine. 130. I reckon that's a 7 liter V12 there. Man. That's got to be a major advancement over the KR18GU engine on the old Caprice 40. It must be an advancement of the KR18GU engine on the older 40 models, right? Yeah, you know it? The lieutenant seems surprised. Just the basic cast iron block, swirl chamber injection, dual chains driving overhead camshafts. Two valves per cylinder, hydraulic valve lash adjustment. Uh, yes, that's right. I'm very impressed that you know these things. Oh, really get Kim to trust you. He likes me. Fine machine, run your hand over the smooth metal surface. Yes, an extraordinary machine. There's gentleness in the lieutenant's voice as his eyes run over the vehicle's contours. It's nice and all, but... Why so modest? Put some zing into it. Flare it up. Slam it down. Helium headlights would improve the range and quality of the visual field a lot. Have you ever thought about switching to helium headlights? Actually, I have a pair at home. Just haven't gotten around to fitting them yet. I need to lay some wiring for the ballast first. If we ever get this case solved, maybe we can do it together? You want to help? Thank you for the offer. 
That might be fun. Let's do the case first, though, all right? He glances at you and smiles. He liked the idea. Okay, let's move. Oh. Him likes me. Ooh, I'm very happy about that. I'm glad he likes me, too. Conspicuous pile of the room. Let me see if I can get like in there or something. But, like, there seems to be a building there. Buddy betrays your degeneracy. Yeah, Measurehead. His body totally betrays his degeneracy. The young woman at the giant side agrees. Say nothing. Size him up first. Are you admiring my morphophysiology? A ripple of muscle passes underneath his skin. He lets you look. You must be frightening to stand in the shadow of this racial pinnacle. Be calm, and Sandwich. You are not in danger because you are not a threat to me. Puff out your chest. Still say nothing. What is this androgynous display of sexual maturity? He looks down at you, taking stock of your physique. Merely standing up makes you sweat profusely. Your breathing is erratic. Your own heartbeat in your ears grows frantic, and you feel your blood pressure rise. Jeez. Stop it! You are embarrassing yourself in front of this woman and your pedomorphic friend. <coughs> this display of weakness may appeal to older women with a stronger maternal instinct, but it is a liability here on Battlefield Martinez. Jean Luc, his body is betraying his degeneracy pretty hard. Maybe you can ask him to leave. She holds her nose. The body is unimportant. I'm with the police and we need to get into the harbor. That is precisely the negligence that has led you to succumb to Al-Ghul. His face contorts in disgust, as if he was smelling a dead rat. You reek of it. An invisible sword of Valhul emerges from your throat. You cannot see it, but others can. It is making the woman in my company sick. Oh, is it alcohol? Wait, um, alcohol. Smelly breath. Kim, is it really so bad? You're right, I'm an alcoholic. Now I need to enter the harbor. I don't have a problem with 
I'll go. I just drink a little on the weekends. You know, if I need to open the, uh, open the door to the harbor. Wait, um, I'll go? Yes! Alhul! He means alcohol. You mean alcohol? Correct! My small skull servant. He nods approvingly. Alhul is an ancient Ilmaran poison. A parasitic fungus that has colonized your race. It is a trick the desert pygmies played on you for humiliating them and stripping them of their land. Intentionally fermented drinks have existed for 10,000 years. The Marian people did not invent alcohol. It's existed since Neolithic. This is a fabrication the alchemists of Yizot and Bashir and the Holam and Hul have fed you. No one believing in it, race loser. I don't think that's how history works. Why don't you have another drink? Your features are not yet congenitally deformed enough. Oh yeah, measure head. The babe looks at him with eyes full of admiration and trans that transcends the merely sexual. Only breath is Kim, is it really that it's bad? It's not good. It's like a rat crawled into your stomach, got drunk, and drowned. Yeah. You're right, I'm a servant of Algo, but I still need to enter the carver. No, you don't. You need to get another drink. Occidental Aplo Group B4 is done giving orders around here. The influence of the Am Sandwich race is waning. Does this remind you of someone? The guy down there? That fat racist over there point to the racist lawyer man. You're just like a him after pumping some iron. Look at my craniology. I am the pinnacle of my ablocoot. The pink blob is a bad example, even of yours. It saddened. You were once a noble and powerful race. He pauses in melancholy reflection. You gave the world eugenics, electricity, and powerful weapons of war like missiles and aerostatic aircraft. You made great gains in metallurgy, race theory, and statecraft. You dominated lesser cultures like the deformed Hemians and the inexplicably potato-obsessed Koikos. But now your ascent to the genetic summit has halted. You are obsessed with sadness and with frivolous pop culture. You will be superseded. Isn't that right, babe? It is, baby, yeah. You know it. <laughs> there is a button right behind him. Just out of reach. It must be the one that opens the door to the harbor. Come on, I just need you to move about 20 centimeters back. It is my task to keep the degenerate trunks from entering the harbor. Push him out of the way seems like a good way to die. The situation is serious. Your people have probably killed a man. I need to talk to your boss. Enough with this begging. You should leave this stage of history with dignity by inviting the other races to a great world war. Bring your troops to the Seminine Islands and to Boogie Street and we will pulverize you. When you are gone, we will build a museum for you. The walls will be lined with bottles of al Ghul, your beloved beverage. Inside, we will store the oaths to homosexuality you call art, and your microcephalic skulls. There may be a peaceful solution to this. You could internalize Meshachet's race theory. He would take you as one of his own. Wouldn't that mean I would have to become a Seminese supremacist myself? Well, not as such. What you do with the mastery of advanced race theory is up to you. You could reject the findings, sure, or accept them and become an advanced racist. I'm 
I don't have a very high chance of knocking them out. Isn't Everot the union boss white? Oh, uh, don't be vulgar. White or not has got little to do with this. The race enigma runs much deeper than that. He turns his eyes towards the harbor, seemingly bored with you. Yeah, but you still serve him. How does that factor into your life? Mr. Clare is a man of vision and means. He has the will to confront Internacional Capital, which is something your race naivistic communists never did. Also, to serve is noble. It takes discipline. Your petulant individualism has only contributed to your race failure. It is lax and moronic. No communist. Communism is pretty cool. Individualism is my jam. My jam is a mysterious fourth thing. Let's see. Okay, so I like communism. Okay, communism's pretty cool. <laughs> Idiotic communism is the single greatest contributor to your race descent. Everywhere around you, the fruits of its failure to challenge the world order. Individualism, rock and roll music, sexually transmitted diseases. STDs are caused by communism, apparently. Or at least communism should have solved them. Above all, Rampant multinational finance still reigning large. Tell me where have you gotten your love of pathetic communism from? Degenerate youth culture? Rock and roll music? I've gotten it from disco, actually. Offshoots of the Seminese people invented disco while having sex under the influence of cocaine. It is a shame upon my race, but what is done is done. I am not surprised you enjoy it so much. This has happened to many of the side products of the inevitable cultural victory of the Seminese race. Okay, I'll ask, who are the Seminese? The South Island race. Apple Group R4R. We are the rightful masters of the Insulindian Archipelago. We descend from the Areopagites of ancient Pericarnassus and arrived here 4,000 years ago. Millennia before you. We are the future. That is all you need to know. So you were born and raised on the island before you moved to Revachal? I am a descendant. The narrow streets of Ulumbuir are with me in my genetic dreams. I see young Seminese women walk into the grey mass on Ile de Fontaine, waiting on immaculate conception from the pay. So you descend from the island, but you did not come from the island yourself. No. I have heard about it on the radio. Oh, so you're not really Simonese, you're just from Revachal. I'm from Kuron. And no, it is not just in Revachal. The city is central to the Simonese strategy. Spreading through its trade networks, our culture will dominate the world. You have heard enough about our phylogenetic secrets for today. You have extinction to come to terms with, and never getting into the harbor. Know anything about this mug? Show him the mug. He does not so much as glance at the object. Know anything about it? Stop showing me your pathetic cup. I have no interest in it. He had nothing to do with it. Um, Kim, what do you think about this? I think this racist is better than the last. But the next racist will be the really good one. That will be the... That will be a lucky racist. He will grant us three wishes. 
Your pedomorphic <laughs> friend has quick wits. A protruding occiput and an indented zygomatic bone. The lieutenant does not flinch. You should keep him close. The congenital defect of farsightedness does not render him a complete invalid. He still has the use of his mind. Huh? Why are you not with the Hardy Boys? I am not the first line of defense. I am the last. In addition, these so-called Hardy Boys are an effeminate clique of bodybuilders. Their company is spiritually degraded. You pick up on something artificial in his tone, like he's putting on an act. This is unlike him. He is usually more himself. But you're all part of the union? The hardy manlets are on the pay of the company. I answer to the union alone. And I do this out of race heroism. Finance is an alien concept to the Simonies. Now leave me be. I must luxuriate in the company of my woman. There's more to it. What have you got against them? Mm -hmm. uh, fine. They have recently fallen under the influence of a possibly sexually perverted female vagrant and a narcotics peddler. It's shameful. Faith Hardy Boy? Find out for yourself, endomorphic blub. Endomorphic blob. Interesting. The lieutenant takes a quick note. What are those tattoos of yours supposed to mean? Racists are generally not very good examples of their race. He gestures towards the lorry man down the street. Welcome to Revershaw. You hear him yell at a redhead woman visiting the fritter nearby. He must think redheads are immigrants. <clears throat> I am not like them. I am craniometric perfection. I have taken the trouble to permanently draw a phrenologic grid on my skull and features. This should dispel any doubt. You sure I'm not craniometrically superior to you? You're right, that's craniometric perfection. My race does not stand a chance, say nothing. Correct. I don't even care. Okay, don't be such a butt to your fellow dock worker. Show him the stolen ID card. The man looks at you, silent and unmoving. His eyes burrow into the remnants of your soul. <laughs> you are not Santiago. Santiago is not you. Even the frenically impaired can see this. Which was trying. Subscribe to his advanced race theory. Ask what kind of races there are first. Classification is core to this stuff. Measurehead, I'm new to this world. Help me understand its races. I need to know what kind of different races there are. Do you? The lieutenant looks at you. Whisper, this is for the thing. The lieutenant looks toward the harbor's electronic door, and then to you. He lets out an audible sigh. You are obviously a liberal, Sayolite. A polyculturalist. I can see it from your love of microtechnology and your sartorial choices. Do not deny your friend the truth you have denied yourself. There are three categories of race. Tip A, the heroic races. Tip B, the servile races. And the vile CF race cauldron of pederasty. Which one do you need education on? Type A. Those are the Simonese, the Areopagit, and the Occidentals. Excluding the Mao, of course. The mound are riddled with eczema to the point where they find it impossible to smile. 
They are all lactose intolerant, a common result of inbreeding. A receding genetic pool has led the mound on reprehensible street parades in mound cities like Stads Canal and Vole de Four. Wearing wooden clogs on their feet, little green tassels on their hats. Wait, who exactly are them on? You know them by the names of their nation states. The Oranese, the Gotwaldians, and the Königsteiners. My people simply call them Maun. Maun is a derogative term for first world people of Gotwaldian descent. They do not all have eczema. Also, people of Katla, like the Sudu and the Huhu, are much more lactose intolerant. The wooden clogs, though? In some municipalities of Moranier, people do wear shoes made of wood to street parades. Green, orange, and even yellow tassels have also been seen on hats. The Maun are proof that you can have too much occidental racial purity and tassel center culture. Inbreathing has led to a lactose intolerant subrace whom no one can take seriously. Tassel centric culture. Okay, got it. Who are type A then in your view? The Vespertines and Messinians of Vesper and Messina. The ancient Meteorans of Meteo by the Golden Pisantic Sea. The Suren of Sur la Clé and even the North Königsteiners all have Tip A race propensities. The other large Mondial Civilization, the Mesk, are too yellow and oleaginous to count as a heroic race. True, they are violent and expansionist, but they have a glandular problem. He draws his finger across his face. Overproduction of sebum. Sebum is leaking into their brains, making them listen to el mariachi music and eat toxic minced meat-based food, which in turn only produces more sebum. And who are the Cinnamonese and Areopagites in this? As proven by the Maun and the Mesk, Occidental Tip A is in retrograde. The Semenese and the Areopagit are on the ascent. And the Semenese are? The indigenous people of this, the Insolindian archipelago. The Semenese inhabit the southern islands. I am Semenese from the stock of Bilibri on Ile de Fontaine. And the Areopagites? The Areopagites are the master race of the Ilmaran deserts. The Simonese are descendants of the Areopagites. We came here during a heroic migration from Ilmara to Ansuland, thousands of years before the lactose intolerant Maun Reden Occidentals discovered this place. He's very upset by the idea of people being lactose intolerant. Wait, didn't Ilmaran Desert Pygmies invent alcohol and get pillaged just a short while ago? Weren't the Ilmarans pillaged by my people and then Algol happened and all that? What is the my people for this? What is Harry's race? No. Those were scimitar wilding race losers of Sarava, Izet, and Bashir, with their Himi servants. Big difference. The Areopagites were fasting and conquering while this happened. You never penetrated the western dunes. Jean, baby, you're on fire. The young woman looks adorable. I know, babe. What's the difference between the Semenese and the Areopagites? The Areopagites are sleek, long-headed. The Semenese are powerful, mesomorphic. The former is an immutable progenitor, unchanged since the Super Isola of Pericarnassus. 
Ancient brains rest in their slender skulls. All silent, contemplating the beauty and the mystery. The latter is perfected and adapting. Together they form the Simeno Ariopagite, or Simeopagite Super Race. That is all. There are no more Tip A races in the world. Okay, so let's learn about Type B. Tip B are the unheroic races, amorphous non competitors of the great race. The Koikos and the Vacholier, they are mud colored. The Koikos of Grad, Yuko, Zimsk, Chest et al. are what you would call white officer in a suspect description. You say Koikos. I've been trained to identify them as white in official descriptions. Yes. To an untrained eye, the Koiko appear white and pinkish, like a hand on which. But look into their eyes and you will see. They are of an indistinct color, and so is their skin. Unhealthy, muddy, and ashen. Rude, but that explains why he calls... Okay, so white people are like ham sandwiches. Which explains why he calls Harry a ham sandwich. And... Then he's... He's like racist against like everybody. Pinkness is a racial quality that has to be earned through centuries of advanced ballistic warfare and cultural domination that the bad people have undergone for drinking al rule and smoking the degenerate tobacco herb and for eating potato. Oh no, those terrible potatoes. The Koiko, the countless micronationalities of Grad are all inexplicably obsessed with Bodad. The only thing they like more is dividing into microscopic ethnostates, like political amoeba. Wouldn't he be one for ethnostates? You don't like ethnostates? <laughs> they are microscopic. The Semenoariopagit superstate will cover the entire remaining planetary crust. Uninterrupted. From Holy Semenine to the Boreal Plateau of Katla. Its leaders will be the genetic epitome of the Semenese and Ariobajit stock, elected by nature, not the base in a spoilage called Demos. And the Vacolaires you mentioned? The Vacholians? Halfway between Tip A and the Racial called Ron. Two makes to no right from wrong. You tried your degenerate little revolution, which was the single greatest failure committed by humans in our 82,000 year history on this planet. Is it 82,000 years that we've been recording history? You have very little idea of what is happening, but that seems a little off. Pretty sure history hasn't lasted that long. I've heard about this revolution, mistakes were made, but it was the right stuff. You're wrong about it. The revolution was perpetrated by a degenerate left wing marauders. Not all the people were ever sure. What is this revolution? Pretty sure history hasn't lasted that long. The mysteries of the people of this planet are a tragedy that has played out countless times over, like a fever dream of skin, hair. Oh, wake up, naive Chespius. Let's just ask what the revolution was. The revolution came to Ravachol from Grad in Zara's written potato cards. It is literally an illness, a prion disease that leaves the parietal and frontal lobe ridden with holes. A soft, sponge-like mass of dementia, hallucination, and paranoia. The revolution is fatal familial in Zombia. A hereditary prion condition passed from the Koiko to the Occidentals. 
but not sexually. Probably through trade routes and potato acid. The prime component of the potato plant. <laughs> you really hate potatoes. Enough of the bare mediocrity. You're not satisfied with the outcome. <sighs> this is long. The vial C through F race cauldron of your of pedastrophe, please. Tips the F are a museum of failed chimeric experiments and tragic maladaptations. They are tortured creatures waiting to be put to sleep. Your morbid interest in them worries me. Chimeric experiments? Lesser races like the mosquito. A grotesque mixture of a masked woman and a Semenes man. Only possible if the mother is masked and the father Semenes. The other way around, they fail to produce offspring. That seems unlikely. The mosquito is born sterile, like a donkey. All they have left is to ride customized motor carriages with hydraulic suspension. Listening to aggressive El Mariachi music to vent their impotent despair. It seems unlikely that two human beings produce genetically sterile offspring. Yeah, I mean, we're all human. Maybe I have misunderstood something, but aren't humans too similar to produce gen genetically sterile offspring? You are right. You have misunderstood. You lack basic phylogenetic education. Anymore. Then there is the Simino Koiki Chimera. Are you sure you wish to know of the Simino Koiki Chimera? It is not an aesthetic sight. Sure. The Koiko, as you know, are very servile, especially when they meet the rich man. Racial scientists have toyed with the idea of crossing the Simonies with the Koiko to produce a super worker of Semini strength and grad servility. This will never happen. The Semenese and the Koiko may have similar interbreeding problems as the Mosquito. We will never know precisely. No Semenese man could maintain an erection in the suffocating potato stench of a Koiko woman or Koika. But enough. It is cruel to entertain ourselves with the deformities of Tipse F. Were there any able bodied races you needed education on? Now that we've been through all the types, do I understand advanced race theory? You understand nothing. To solve the great race enigma, you have to first ask yourself what is the race enigma? You have not even worded the mystery, let alone solved it. Will you let me into the harbor if I do? We will see. Access to the Union is important for our investigation, but there may be another way in, without becoming a race theoretician. I would like to find this other way, but I don't know what it is at this point in time. How do I word the mystery, except... You need to internalize what you have heard here today. Then return to me. This clarity does not come instantly. Let's discuss something I else. cannot possibly imagine what else we have to discuss. Okay. Ace is low. Oh, Ace is low. For the rest of the world, the Ace is low is just some cool, revachol thing. Politically neutral. In Revachol, it still holds revolutionary connotations. Also, have you looked at Lieutenant Kitsuragi's clothes? He wears a bomber jacket, just like the ones worn by aerostatic brigades. And those cargo pants look like they could fit tools for hot fixing your burning aerostatic. You should ask him about this. Ooh, two plus empathy towards Kim Kitsuragi and plus one is Spirit Days Corpse, the roots of the RCM. I like that one. What am I gonna do with me? I really don't want to learn how to be a racist.
Let's do Kingdom of Consciousness. Not wanting to punch people for a little bit is probably a good thing. wandering man how can I help you Kuna told me you were supposed to know about the armor <laughs> the little boy had the good on his promise his promise to get me into trouble to sick the pigs on me pardon the choice of words not mine what happened I was asked to look into that armor situation official Union probe you know track it down see who took it did you at first I thought why not maybe the pieces can feed the strike Buy us a few more days under the sun, you know? So I went to this boy. He said he'll make me his prison bitch. He's got eyes everywhere, and the cops in his pocket, and he's the king of Jamrock. <clears throat> Serves me right for doing menial footwork. I dropped that probe right then and there, and it still got me into trouble. One bad move is all it takes. So Kuno used this to what, scare you? It's a minor nuisance. It's all good. He contemplates taking a swig from his flask. The probe into the armor. D what did you learn? I learned that people don't want to talk to a drunk union man about some armor. <clears throat> what else? Not much. Technical stuff, mostly. That was the interesting part. What sort of technical stuff? I did some research into this armadura. Let's say I have friends at the library. I didn't get into the material science, just how it comes off. How does it come off? In parts. Four in total. The helmet was the first to go. The kid says he tore it off and kicked it into the sea. I believe him. The boots? Well, it looks like you're wearing them. <laughs> so, as I count, there are two parts missing. The gauntlets and the cuirass. This is where I left off. Too much hassle. More like a job for some militia. Hold up, four pieces. Helmet, curlless. Gauntless boots. What about the leggings? Oh, they're just gone. They don't exist anymore, if they ever did at all. Forget about them. I do. I'm ambitious. I'm going to find all of it. All the pieces. All of it? There are junior officers out there, eager to prove themselves. I would leave some for them, but okay. Let's find all of it. <laughs> it's implied. He finds it unlikely that you will succeed in this. Might as well try, though. A mesquite epic, then. All across Martinez. I hope it will be a real bonanza for you. No problem. If you see that kid, thank him from Call Me Manana. Thank him for showing me the way. I'm a bit sore on money right now. Can you give me some of it? Sure thing, my friend. I can help you out. Flips a coin towards you. Um, try to catch it. The coin lands into your hand as if it has always belonged there. The swallow returns. Appreciate it. Always glad to help out the RCM. Shame I can't do more. Things are meager at the moment due to... He nods towards the protesters. You know, the winter's fat is slowly running out and all. Still better than scabbing, though. Union has problems getting by? Nothing to worry about, really. The jam's a bit of a mess. Cargo can't get in or out. The rationing is a bit stricter, is all. Supply should last a strike, though. Every little bit helps, you know. I'm always glad to help out when possible. Not like these slithering scabs. He looks at them in disbelief. They're talking to you, gotta run. You look down at the white ceramic sabatons, hugging your arches and calves. Surprised at how well they fit. Your movements cause tiny little clicks, like dice rolling somewhere far away, as the plates reorient to your motions. I will be responsible with this. This is just to protect me from harm, not to show off. The hardened, vitreous enamel, at once sleek and light, adds a glow to your cheeks and a spring to your step. Just imagine what a full suit of this stuff could do for you. This is a long sought-after enemy technology. I can't just enjoy it. I must study it. Yes, 
You should analyze the armor. Figure out its vulnerabilities. Remember, this is a highly specialized kinetic redistributor meant to stop bullets. Wear it. Observe its properties. See if there's a weakness in the design. Ooh, that could be useful. I mean, if one person had the armor, then who knows? Maybe other people will too. All the problems. The rest of the armor. I'm gonna lie to you. Turn and confront him. Of course, you gonna lie. Like, who's probably constantly lying? No. It's bad. Things are busy enough. You're going to waste less of my time? Maybe. The Hulkin man oozes stark skepticism. You don't have any tips on how to punch a guy out, do you? Say a really big race theorist guarding a button? Not before you get in there and get your ass whooped. Learn by failure, I always say. He might have some advice, but you've got to at least try to fight Measurehead first. Return if you fail. <laughs> oh, oh, that's great. Okay, so I should just try to fight him and then... Don't think that's gonna work out too well. You know... You see a sturdy woman humming to herself. She seems to browse in books. But one point at the book. Yes? Hello? Nods, her attention fully focused on reason. reading. Who are you? Me? No one. I'm just the working class woman. Can I see your, your shoes? I want to see if you have an odd show, soul suit. Is she such a working class woman? Why isn't she working? Shouldn't a working class woman be working? Not all the time. Right now I'm browsing books. Even a working class woman needs something to read. Phenomenal. It is. I'm a policeman. I know you are. Good then. Mm -hmm. She reverts her attention to the soggy books on the book stand. Do you need the help of a policeman? What with? She tries hard, hard to focus on the book stand. What with? A lot of things. For example, people tend to go missing. Watch her browse books. Her hands move over the book covers. The tips of her fingers look rough, stained with yellow. It seems like she has spent a lot of time at work, smoking. Another comrade. Years of labor are pressing down on her shoulders. She deserves a hug for all the work she's done for mankind. Give her a hug. You step in and close your arms around this foreign body, wandering astray in touch. There's a small movement beneath your hands as you shut your eyes. Then, a tiny voice breaks out and asks, What is happening? <laughs> yeah. She seems to be confused. Your hands are wrapped around her polyester coat. The fabric feels cold, moist from the sea nearby. Keep hugging her. The situation is oddly intimate. Your cheek is pressed against her shoulder. Her hand is trapped between your chest. Five seconds pass, and their passing seems so unimaginably long. Then she coughs and says again, Uh, what are you doing, officer? I am fighting for the working class. Fighting for it how? She hasn't let go of your embrace yet. Hug by hug, hug. Oh. There's a strange sensation as the woman strengthens her grip. She's hugging you back. I guess it's better than nothing. Keep fighting on, my fellow comrade. Then she breaks up the hug, her cheeks flushed. Is there anything else I can help you with? The woman before you nods and returns to her reading. 